Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. Now, the start of this episode was going to be talking about religion. However, I recorded the first draft of this episode, talked for 20 minutes about religion, realised that I came out with no conclusions, went back to the drawing board, and decided to come up with a plan, and then talk about religion after coming up with the plan. So, let me present to you my master plan. As you know, our goal is to eventually go east, right? We want to take a bunch of this land because basically I never go here in campaigns and I think it would be cool to go this way and allow this side of the world to basically develop um, without our interference. In order to do that, a couple of different things need to happen. One, we need to become independent because we want to be separate from Sweden. We want Sweden to go off and do their own things. We want to become independent from them. Two, we don't want to go west. Now, you might be thinking, that's pretty obvious stuff, but it will come up later. And then three, at some point, once we get a bunch of land over here, we're going to want to reform our religion so that we can eventually become uh, an organized religion and eventually uh, become feudal. Those are the three things that we're going to want to do when we go east. So, why did I say I don't want to go west? Well, if you want to reform a religion, what you need to do is you need to get three holy sites. Now, if we have a look at the holy sites of um, Asatru, which is our current religion, you will see that currently we have zero of them. None of the holy sites are within our realm. If we want to get them, there's obviously an easy one we could grab in Sweden. Um, and then, at that point, if we're going east, there's one of them. All the way down here. Apart from that, there's these three. East Francia uh, involves a lot of work in terms of getting that one. Jorvik is very, very far west. And then Nitharos is also um, a little bit west and also in the wrong direction. Right? Like, none of these ones are where we want to go. And this one is quite far away and we need three of them. So, immediately... Asatru has holy sites which are completely opposite to our plans. So, if I want to go east, it would make sense to reform a different religion, right? It would make sense to maybe look at one of the religions which are actually to the east of us. I know, it's a crazy concept. And of that, there are basically three ones which are worth looking at. Uh, by that, I'm meaning, like, yeah, Tengri's to the east of us, but the the holy sites all the way over here. That's not going to happen. Same, same with this one. The holy sites are all the way over here. There are three that actually have holy sites which are relevant to us. The first is um, Ukonusko. This one here. It has five holy sites, three of which are very, very much in land that we want to immediately conquer and are within reach. The other two are not that far out of the way. This would be very possible. The next one is Vidalist. Vidalist has some holy sites which are a little bit in the wrong direction, but has three that are very close together and easy to grab. Then we have Slovenskin down here. This one has ones that are less easy to get to, but it does have Novgorod, which is land that we want to take anyway, for another reason. So, out of these three religions, this one is the direction we want to go, easy to grab. This one would probably allow us to get all the holy sites in the quickest amount of time. This one contains some land that we need to grab anyway. I think, out of these three, if I want to switch religion, I want to go with this one. Because I think these three holy sites are directly where we want to conquer first, and they're easy to get to. And then the other ones are not that far out of the way. I think they're possible. So, um, at some point, we're going to switch to this religion. Now, why did I say we have to attack Novgorod anyway? Well, that's part of the becoming independent plan. Because if we want to become independent, uh, we are going to need to become a king-level character. Now, there are two ways of doing this. One is we kick Sweden out, or we kick the current king out of Sweden, and we take Sweden. 
right? That's way one. Way two is that we get a kingdom of our own. Now, our current religion, if we look at a Satru, allows us um, one invasion per lifetime. This invasion cast this belly is interesting because it allows you to take all the land of another ruler and all the titles. Like, for instance, Novgorod, the kingdom, and all of the titles. This would then allow us to become a king. We grab our current titles that we hold out to Novgorod, and then at that point, things are fantastic for us. We have all this land, we have a kingdom, it's great. The problem is, it costs a lot of prestige to do, we need to be a higher level of fame, and we also need to have more troops. But at some point, we're going to need to declare this war. So, what is my plan if I want to switch to this religion and then attack Novgorod? My plan is conquer all this land. That will hopefully give us more troops. We can then use that to attack Novgorod. And, um, well, that's pretty much it. Grab the land, get the troops, attack Novgorod. Now, I also don't think this land's going to give us enough troops. And we're going to need to maybe get a little bit of a money... Um, horde built up, but that's roughly the plan. And why do I not care about what the religion gives us? Why do I not care one bit about these tenants and these virtues and all this sort of stuff? The reason is simple. If I look at reforming a faith, at this point, you can do what you like. You can change everything. You can be like, I'm going to change all of these things. And all it does is change the cost of this, right? All it does is just change the creation cost of the religion. It doesn't really matter that much, right? What the current religion has. If you have the piety, you can change it to anything. So right now, not a huge problem. Also, as long as we stay a Satru, right? If we stay a Satru right up until the moment that we want to reform this religion, then we can use a Satru religion's blot stuff to allow us to get executions to earn piety. And all we have to do is gather a bunch of people in our prison, execute them all at once, gain piety, switch to the other religion, reform it and we're done right so um what we want to do immediately is look at land see if we can conquer it and then look at raiding and see uh what our options are now one thing about conquering land which is interesting for us currently is that we still have confederate partition now confederate partition means that it will split titles even if the title has not been created yet. So if we were to grab another duchy over here, like say, the Duchy of Finland, what would happen is, if it can create the Duchy of Finland, it will, and it would give it to our second heir. This is a problem because obviously we don't want our land to switch. So what we need to do before we conquer enough land to make a new duchy, is we need to have enough prestige so that we can switch that duchy to a Scandinavian elective um, immediately because then we vote for the same person and then that person takes over both titles, right? That's roughly the plan. So, having said all of that, first on our list is get 1,500 prestige. Declare, for an, t declare wars, take enough for a duchy. Take the duchy, gain 1,500 prestige, come back, take another duchy, change it to Scandinavian elective, get 1,500 prestige, and so on and so forth until such a point as we feel like we've become stronger. So, step number one actually becomes go and raid for some prestige. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait a little bit for our troops to reinforce first. So, that's roughly the plan. Um, I did still manage to ramble on for about 10 minutes, but that's about 10 minutes shorter than it was last time. So, let's start reinforcing our troops. Which basically means, let's start sitting here a little bit. Oh, Bjorn's Boils Spreads. So where's this? Oh, that's over here. Okay. That's not good. Are you saying that over here there's a, um... You, you have some kind of uh, plague? Oh, you do! Lovely! Lovely! Okay. Well, um... That's 
great to hear. Okay. Oh, task finished. Oh, you've increased control. Fantastic. So now Halslingland is at full control. Great. Next, uh, I would like you to increase control in Angermanland. Cool. Uh, so it looks like uh, Halsingland is outperforming our capital currently. We would love for our heir to inherit that title instead. Uh, we could, in theory, give him our capital, and we could make our capital somewhere else, but I don't think that's going to be a good idea. Although, wait a second. Wait a second. Does it outperform, or does it? Is this one got... Ah, uh, it's got realm capital bonus. Actually, it looks like Halsingland might be ahead. Um outside of the levies yeah i think it actually will make us more money so maybe what i should do is i should upgrade halsingland on the assumption that our uh, heir is going to inherit it yeah that seems like a good idea so we want to put a sparring grounds probably if we want it to have the same kind of stuff how much does that cost us uh sorry a war camp 28 plus a bunch more prestige. So we need the same kind of thing. We need more prestige and more money. Okay, cool. Worth thinking about. Okay, Bjor Bjorn's boils are spreading. Uh, I don't like how close that's getting to us. Um, is it worth maybe having a look at you and maybe getting you to do um, some plague resistance here? Yeah, let's maybe pivot you to plague resistance. Hopefully that works. That is definitely spreading, huh? Directly at us. Um, this is where I'd be thinking uh, we're on an island, close the borders, but we'll see. Oh, it was also down in the bottom part here. Okay. It's currently minor. But we have some other uh, ones all over the place. So what else have we got? We've got uh, the Andalusian Pox, which is also minor. It is smallpox. And then we've got measles, I assume, yeah, all the way over here as well. Okay, well, lovely. Bjorn's boils is still spreading. Hopefully it doesn't spread to us. All right. <laughs> A shadow over Angerman land. Oh, we also have some tutorials now. A walk through the chiefdom of Angerman land seems pleasant enough at first, but closer inspection reveals something deeply unpleasant. A plague has arrived in this unassuming hamlet. The lumpy skin of the diseased is bright red and painful to the touch. They sweat even in the cold and they have the look of a leper in their eyes. While numbers remain low, more and more of the population are beginning to demonstrate these symptoms. It's only a matter of time before it spreads further. Already people are calling this affliction. Bjorn's boils. Though this may never reach the capital, providing aid where needed could prove critical in, in keeping it at bay. So we can say those poor sick peasants, we already lost legitimacy just for having a plague, or summon the physician. Summon the physician! The dim, flickering light of Thordis's infirmary illuminates the scene as the physician lays out a plan of attack. I have a number of observations regarding Bjorn's boils, Chiefly the way patients are besieged by red spots like I've never seen before. The plague does not seem appear to be too severe. It's my recommendation as a professional that we take a light approach to prevent the spread. After all, we do not wish to hurt the economy. The inco economy, very important in times like these. Unfortunately, the exact strategy for preventing the spread of this plague is mine to make. So a soft appro approach is best. Desperate measures or the best action is inaction. Well, she said soft, we go soft. Success. It would seem the moderate approach has proven successful with a slow in the spread of disease symptoms among commoners. Though the impact is quite minimal, um, it should at least grant more time to work on a more permanent solution. So we get mild epidemic protection. So an extra five protection there. Okay. Tutorials. An introduction to plagues. So we've got the plagues panel. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, I've seen that. Thank you. Each plague is broken down into sections. Realm plagues convey information on plagues. Yes, 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 that's fine. Within this panel, relevant information is stored for each plague, which tracks whether it's minor, major, or apocalyptic. Luckily, none are apop uh, apocalyptic. Okay, you can then view the plague. All right, let's view Bjorn's balls. 
but oh, sorry, boils. Um, in here, the panel includes information on the infection rate of each barony impacted by the plague. The infection rate will progress towards its maximum value at different rates depending on the intensity of the plague and can be mitigated with plague resistance. Okay, so average infection rate here is that. Uh-huh. I see. You can see where else it's been affected. Yeah, so it's over here as well. Uh, each baron. So these my baronies? Is Jomala my barony or something? Yes, Jomala is my barony. As is uh, this one. No, that one isn't. That one isn't mine. Okay. Realm infections. Infected baronies one. Okay, yeah. So that's there. Runesund. Oh, no, that is my barony. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's showing the two places that are mine that it's infecting currently. I understand, and what percentage of people are infected. Okay. Uh, infection rate walls progress towards its maximum value if nothing is done to fight it. Okay. So it will keep going up here unless you have some resistance, at which point it will stay lower until it goes away. It also gives a negative depending on what how much is affected. So if it's over 10%, you get controlled decline and plague danger. If it's over 50%, you get more. If it's over 80%, you get more. I understand. What's the other one? Plague resistance. Cool. We increased in multiple ways. Buildings like hospitals and charnel grounds give innate bonuses to plague resistance. Other less permanent solutions include court. Uh, position tasks performed by court physician decisions or events. As plague resistance increases, the infection rate of the relevant barony decreases. Uh, whilst it's unlikely you'll be able to fully stamp out a large plague just from taking measures like these, reducing the infection rate will help reduce the general devastation. So basically, you're going to take a negative, but how much resistance you put in place determines how much of a negative you play you take. Right? That's basically what it's saying. So like this one is close to hitting the 50% uh, negative, right? It's close to hitting this 50% one, which will actually be quite bad. But currently, it's just at the over 10% one, which is not really that bad at all. I understand. I mean, challenge someone to a, tr a trial by combat. Don't need to do that. Isolate the capital. Uh, we could do. Enter seclusion. Um... It's not a major disease. I think I'm happy to let it spread. Okay. Why would I want to challenge this person to trial by combat? What what, what have they done? Uh, Yeah, like, I understand I can, but why? They're an adulterer, I see. So they got 21 prowess. We do not. Okay, I don't really think I need to uh, challenge them because they would destroy me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let the plague run. We're going to see what happens. It should, in theory, be lowering the amount of control here. Yeah, but not by that much. Um, one thing I was told, by the way, is that for controlled growth and decline, one of the main reasons they were split is that the percentages uh, that you got to control growth and decline actually originally applied to both. It applied to positives and negatives at the same percentage. But because there are so many negatives now, thanks to all the diseases, basically they had to split them because otherwise you were going to constantly have huge negatives to control growth, which is going to cause you um, problems long term. Right. Um, we might want to get on boats and leave, actually. You know what? Let's let's get some raiders. Let's go leave. Cool. Oh, one thing I also forgot to do. Um, in here, we have a court tutor position. We should put somebody in it. I'm going to choose um, my player heir. You can be my court tutor for now. Why do I need a court tutor? Well, because I have children being educated and currently there is no court tutor. Which means that they do not get the benefit of a court tutor. Which increases stats, incre increases the chance of a good education. All that sort of stuff. So, let's leave. And then we'll figure out where we're going afterwards. My poor son, also Ufkel, also got uh, some uh, measles. 
Grave news re reaches me. My son and heir, Heisinger, has fallen ill with measles. The future is uncertain. Death lingers closely by his bedside. Yet not, yet all is not lost. Heisinger might survive should luck be on his side. Only the Norns know his fate. The physician wants to know how my son should be treated. Critical health penalty? Oh no. <laughs> um. We will let our son decide what treatment he wants. The little misery. Itching. I wake up in the middle of the night and find my leg bleeding, my nails too. The itching is so strong I can't stop myself from digging deeper. I sink my face in cold water, hoping it will go away. My reflection, my reflection, red eyes. My lord, that's the malady known as measles. Okay, it's a critical health penalty. Um, I mean, we have to like take the drastic measures, right? We have a critical health penalty. We are near death. Too late for caution. Balanced humors. High Chiefess Thordis's assistant assured her that the potion had, be, had put me to sleep. Oh, how wrong she was. I could neither speak nor move, yet I was still aware of everything they did to me. I tried to scream and thrash, but I was a prisoner in my own body. The procedure seemed to last forever. The treatment was almost as unpleasant as my symptoms, yet it seems to have been effective. While I'm not feel, fully cured, I feel better. So I got a massive health boost, which means we're only on poor health, but that is not fantastic. Um, I mean, like... Honestly, to span the army, my only reason for leaving early was that, um, like, I thought we might avoid measles, but we got it just as we left, and now we're wounded, and we don't really want to go out wounded. So, yeah, horrible. Absolutely horrible. Let's get chivalric dominance while we're here. Um, one thing I was going to look at this episode... Oh, I was going to look and see whether we could get a um, accolade, but we still don't have any. So, that's fine. Somebody said we could get one at Duke level, but... Uh, we cannot. Maybe that's for organized relig uh, religions. I don't know. For feudal people. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, we're going to put on speed 5 and hope we don't die. Hey, smuggling ring is gone though. That's good. They probably all died of measles. Balanced humors. Uh, High Singer has lost um, measles. That is fantastic. That seems pretty good. Okay. Ingvar lost me uh, measles. We lost measles. There's a 5% ch chance we go blind, though. 5% chance. We got it. We're blind. Lovely. <laughs> Just lovely. Um, do we not have enough champions left? No. Too many died. Alright. Um, cool. How's Bjorn's uh, boils looking? It's pretty much gone now. Alright. Well, that's cool. Cool. I mean, we just became disfigured and blinded. No big deal. Our health is poor now. Honestly, I don't really want to leave because I think we're about to just drop dead. But um, we'll see. Bjorn's bo uh, boils is gone. You know what might make me feel better? I think what would make me feel better is doing a little raiding of Finland. I think that would make me feel better. I can. Oh, wait. Well, you know what? You know what, then? I'm not going to do that. We have 1.4k troops. Maybe we go raid Livonia. Has anyone raided Livonia? Some people have raided Livonia, but not like a lot of them. Let's let's go land here. Raid, raid Livonia. We obviously shouldn't really be leading armies, but maybe we should because we're still the best despite being blind. And wounded? And depressed? Alright. We'll simply relay our orders. Um, and people describe to us the situation. And we'll relay our orders. That's what, what we'll do. Alright, next place. Get to raiding. Are they at war with someone or something? No, they just don't care. Alright, well that works for me. I'm quite happy to raid them as long as they would like me to raid them. Can I head in here? No. Alright, well, get back on the boats. Could head over to this guy's land. He is currently at war. He is attacking someone. Let's uh, maybe sneak to his capital. Okay. Our little blind raiding party. Let's go. Child of my dynasty. We have a grandchild called Asluk. 
who is High Singer's child. Okay. Fire and blood. The settlement of um, Pilten or Piltine, a, an important stronghold in Greater Vein, Maine, has fallen to my raiders. Do we want bounteous plunder, or do we want to say we've taken enough already? I will become stressed if I choose this, which will lower my health even more. I have to just say I'm, I'm happy with what we got. Let's head to the next one. Raid or trade? Um, I'll take the chance of trading. It costs us some prestige, but it does get, make me lose a ton of stress. My offer is accepted. Well, that's unfortunate, but whatever. Well, how they out. Can I raid Gotland? I don't know if I can raid my own uh, religion. Let's find out. We'll head to Gotland. Scheme at court. We can. Wonderful. Well, I've raided them. We captured a prisoner. Ooh. Um, she is spindly, unfortunately, so we don't really want this prisoner as a concubine. But we could ransom them if they had 10 gold, which they don't have. All right. Well, uh, welcome to my prison, Grimma. Um, yeah, welcome to my prison. This will be your long-term home. You're underneath my liege. We probably can't raid you. Can we raid Smolland? I think so. Yeah, let's go raid him. A familial reflection. I remember the day when my daughter Inthrifer was born to my high chiefess Thordis, my charming daughter. Um, memories like these bring me comfort. No matter what happens, I know that my family is there for me in that house. Austere stands strong. Devoted with axe in hand, I whisper under my breath. Okay. I can lose stress or I can pay money to lose more stress. I will just simply lose stress. Okay. Here, we still have too few champions, but that's fine. You know what? Maybe one of these people who has been our long-term prisoner could be a champion for us. Yeah, you know what? Nupa? Nupa, I will accept you joining my court. Wonderful. He should now be a champion for us. Great. That's what you love to see. We're dead. Jarl Solvi of Norland has crossed the door to the world of spirits at 47 years of age. He died of heart failure. Known to be an exceptional strategist, he spent many of his days examining fields and drilling his troops. Jarl Heisinger ascends to the throne. Loyal to his spouse and family, Heisinger is certain to place the good of his dynasty above all personal concerns. So died of heart failure, he founded the house, was distinguished, faithful, had the overseer perk done, fought in two offensive wars and did one activity. We're now taking over with not really very much. We did however lose two bits of land to our brother, which is not ideal. Uh, let's put in a commander of this army. We'll continue raiding. Uh, we need to choose our heir. I mean, right now our brother makes like a lot of sense as an heir. He's not great, but you know, like he's pretty much the best option. Uh, we need a lifestyle. I think Marshall again makes a lot of sense for us. Maybe with chivalry for extra prowess and advantage. Okay, so we got a lot of prowess. We need a new chancellor and a new steward. Uh, new steward is going to be Ragnar. New chancellor is going to be my brother. That seems fine to me. Uh, I think I might get you to improve direct vassal opinion to improve these two guys' opinion of me. Spymaster hates me. Yep, as does everybody else. Our mother could be our spymaster, though. Uh, she doesn't hate me. That seems fine. Um, the rest of this seems okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, we can still challenge this person to a trial by combat. We could win now. That's, that's the change on that one. Um, we can ransom this person for 10 gold. Do I want to? Um, are you any good? I don't know. You're worth 10 gold. I'll take the 10 gold. I'm going to get an alliance with my brother. Let's do that. That means he can't form factions against us. Cool. You love to see it. We also can't do anything against him, but that's fine. Cool, we got 10 gold. They have attacked us down here. Are we winning? We are indeed. Our champion killed their champion. Council invitation. 
To my vassal, as an influential Jarl, it is only fair you have a voice in my council. In recognition of this fact, I hereby offer you the position of Chancellor of Sweden. With my six diplomacy, I'm the best option you have for Chancellor? That's worrying. But it does get us prestige per month and fellow vassal opinion. It's kind of neat. Right, move our way up here. Win the siege. Let's work our way back home. What's this one? You want to pay me 10 gold for Grimma? I'll take 10 gold for Grimma. That's fine. Head back to our uh, land. We got a bunch of money, a bunch of prestige. Uh, it's come to me. Uh, my sparrowster has come to me with grave news. She is certain that High Chief Des Loth, my own wife, is scheming against my wet nurse, Ulf Hilder. Um, I mean, I don't really want to do anything to my wife. So, I'm going to just let everybody know that she's a traitor and then we'll move on with her life. We can pardon our wife. I will pardon her. She is pardoned. Let's disband our army. Let's get rid of that for right now. We can raise a runestone. Oh, we could probably hold a funeral as well, right? Because we should have a body. Yes! We can do a funeral! Fantastic! Well, what I think we will do is we will end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. And next time, we're going to hold a funeral for our father. How exciting. Right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.